Tenkuru is an ugly, lonely, perverted loser, whose life is filled with boredom until he attends an all-girls school, rizzing them all up and discovering his godly powers. But before this, a girl named Haruko was happily walking along the beautiful tree-lined street, looking forward to meeting her childhood friend Takuru after three years. Takuru, a year younger than Haruko, was someone she had met in preschool for the first time. When Haruko reached Takuru's house, Takuru was in his dirty underwear. Without saying anything, she entered his house. Inside, things took a clumsy turn, and a bunch of boxes was going to fall on Haruko, and to save her from any injuries, Takuru jumped upon her but accidentally ended up catching one of her big melons. Despite the awkward moment, they were both happy to see each other after such a long time. As they walked to school, Haruko asked Takeru the reason behind his joining the Tenbi Academy. Takeru explained that his previous school, mostly filled with ugly boys, had left him feeling bored. Hearing that Haruko's school had become a convent school excited Takeru, especially because he looked forward to activities like dancing and sumo, dreaming of dancing with girls having big melons. Therefore, he planned to take admission in her school. After reaching the Tenbi Academy, Haruko had to part ways with Takuru for the preparations of the boring entrance ceremony, where she held the position of head girl. For Takuru, this was an entirely new experience of being surrounded by attractive girls. Following a group of them, he ended up getting lost in the academy. To his surprise, he stumbled upon two girls engaged in an intense sword fight. Takuru was amazed by their skills. As he observed, he noticed another girl named Kodama enjoying the fight from a tree, hanging upside down. Kodama was there engaged in a talk with her invisible superpower, with whom only she was familiar. When Takuru approached her to mention that he accidentally saw her dirty panties, a sword thrown by Azuki during her duel hit the branch, causing Kodama to fall on Takuru in a surprising kissing scene. As Kodama was about to react angrily to Takuru's accidental view, she stopped, noticing a symbol on Takuru's chest. Taking advantage of the distraction, Takuru quickly ran away from the scene. Upon seeing the symbol, Kodama realized that she had finally found the enemy she had been searching for. Later that day, during the entrance ceremony, amidst the principal's boring speech, she introduced the academy's useless motto which was mind, body, and beauty. The principal continued stressing the importance of love and battle in student life. Due to his idiotic genes, Takuru was slightly confused by the speech, struggling to grasp its meaning. The ugly principal went on to announce that students would be provided with 10 specific elements to achieve eight makings, promising a bright future for those successful. To illustrate her point, the principal called upon two girls, none other than those who were fighting earlier, to demonstrate a duel. However, they explained that they had already dueled a few hours ago, with Azuki emerging as the victor. Uncertain of how to proceed with the demonstration, Kadama intervened, volunteering to take responsibility for the duel. To everyone's surprise, especially Haruko's, Kodama announced that she had selected Takuru as her opponent. Haruko knew Takuru wasn't prepared for such a challenge. However, later Kodama approached Takuru, assuring him to relax as they would pretend to engage in battle, with Kodama promising not to go all out. However, the surprising twist was that Kodama had different plans altogether. She considered Takuru her enemy and decided to beat him thoroughly, seeking revenge for him accidentally seeing her dirty panties. Haruko was worried for Takuru, as with being useless, he also didn't possess a Makin. Makins were the world's most powerful weapons, and there were eight different types of them in the world, and everyone in the school used a replica of one. As the fight began, Kadama wasted no time and swiftly attacked Takuru directly at him. Just as Haruko was about to intervene to save Takuru, a girl appeared out of nowhere with her Makin, defending against Kadama's attack and creating a thunderstorm in the area. Possessing a powerful Makin, the girl amazed everyone. On the other hand, upon seeing Takuru's ugly face, she became happy and fainted only to be caught by Takuru, who was equally surprised when she mentioned his name. She introduced herself as Inaho, Takuru's fiancée, although Takuru couldn't recall her. This situation left Haruko feeling jealous and angry, especially as she witnessed Inaho and Takuru together. Later in the evening, Haruko visited Takuru's dormitory room to discuss a few things about his ugly fiancée. She got to know that Inaho had already moved into Takuru's room with all her belongings. Haruko has been dormitory superintendent tried to explain that she couldn't allow this, but Inavo revealed that she had already obtained permission from the school's principal. Another surprise unfolded when Haruko discovered that Kodama had also moved her luggage into the room, as its capacity was for three people. Meanwhile, Haruko made a spontaneous decision and brought her luggage to join all three of them. This unexpected turn of events formed a unique dynamic among the four of them. At night, while everyone was sleeping, Haruko took a look at the rooftop, 
to find Takuru uncomfortably sleeping. However, she was astonished to see Takuru was sleeping next to his fiancée, Inaho. The next morning, Takuru still feeling the pain from Kadama's punch. Meanwhile, he accidentally saw Kadama in a full plot in the bathroom, rewarding him with another punch. After getting ready, all four of them rushed towards school as they were running late. Takeru lagged behind the three girls due to his useless genes, but with the help of Kadama's invisible power, he managed to reach the school just in time. Upon arrival, they met the president of the student council, Takeki Furin, who expressed disappointment for being late. During the interaction, due to the strong gust of wind, attention was drawn to a bare print on Takeki Furin's panties, causing her embarrassment. Later in the classroom, everyone was excited to see the relationship between Takeru and Inaho. Suddenly, the principal with Big Melon, Rokuju Manori, announced a physical checkup for the day. Takeru and a boy named Kengo seized the opportunity to excuse themselves to the washroom and rushed outside the school to a tree with lightning speed. Their intent was to sincerely observe the girls during their physical checkup through a gap in the curtains. There they spent their life's best moment, witnessing a beautiful scenario filled with melons and rice cakes, including girls in full plot. But when it came time to see Takeru's fiancée Inaho, Takeru blinded Kengo's eyes with his hand. They then realized that Kadama was also present on the tree above them, watching them stalk the girls. As a reward, Kadama punched both of them in the face. They apologized and swiftly ran away from the scene. Later, during the boys' physical checkup, an attractive female instructor was conducting the examination. There, Takeru was introduced to a machine named Karanbo, designed to help students find the perfect match for their make and out of the aid available. However, when Takeru placed his hand in the machine, it couldn't find a perfect match for him. Later that day, a meeting was convened with the creator of the useless machine, Tadayashi, who was equally surprised by this abnormality. When Takeru questioned if it was a serious problem, everyone rushed towards him, emphasizing the seriousness of the situation. As without a Makin, Takeru would struggle to defend himself and sustain in the academy. The creator requested a month to repair the machine. After the meeting, Tadayashi had a private conversation with the principal, and surprisingly, they were familiar with Takeru's father. Later that day, Takeru sat on a bench in the courtyard with Inaho, feeling upset about having to live without a Makin for a month. But then, suddenly a pamphlet crossed Takeru's face, revealing that several clubs in the school were seeking more useless members. Just as they discussed this, Haruko arrived with Takeru's lunchbox, and Takeru, in a spontaneous decision, decided that Haruko would help him explore the various clubs in the school. Later, Takeru was truly amazed by the various activities clubs around the school. However, he had not yet decided which club to join. Suddenly, his attention was caught by the photography club, and he felt a genuine interest. Unfortunately, Haruko assumed that Takeru would be interested in taking shots of Inaho in a full plot, so she rejected his suggestion. Instead, she recommended joining the security club. The next morning, as Haruko jogged, she couldn't shake off the memory of the previous evening's conversation. Despite informing Takeru that she was the vice president of the security club, he remained unsure about joining, leaving Haruko anxious. Later that day, a mishap occurred when Takeru accidentally saw Haruko's full plot in the bathroom resulting in him getting injured on his nose. Seeking information about the security club, Takuru inquired about it from Haruko. Haruko explained that the security club's duty was to resolve issues among students in the school, emphasizing its importance with a compelling speech. Takuru and Inaho were impressed by that speech, but Kengo, who had been with Takuru the previous day, suddenly appeared and expressed his interest in joining the club. In an attempt to stop Kengo, Takuru accidentally touched Haruko's melon again, Misinterpreting the situation, Haruko's childhood friend Yuruchi intervened and punched Takuru. Upon realizing her mistake, Yuruchi got herself introduced to Takuru. They later went to witness a fight between Azuki and a muscular guy named Kurigasa. The condition of the fight was that if Kurigasa won, Azuki would agree to be his girlfriend. However, Kurigasa, with a powerful punch, tore Azuki's top bringing excitement to the viewers. Takuru, uncomfortable with a boy beating an ugly girl, felt the urge to defend Azuki. Despite efforts from other girls to stop him, Takeru couldn't restrain himself and intervened in the match, delivering a strong punch to protect Azuki. During the chaos, Azuki, taking advantage of Kurigasa's distraction, knocked him out with her knees. After the fight, Azuki expressed disappointment that a fresher had intervened, but Inaho was proud of Takeru for his bravery. Haruko realized that Takeru's instinct to protect girls stemmed from his childhood, leaving her genuinely impressed. In that moment, Takeru decided to join the security club, expressing his intent to protect everyone. The club's president was delighted to welcome three new members in their club. Later that day, they held a meeting at the hot spring to get to know each other better. 
However, the atmosphere took a turn when Takuru and Kengo became visibly excited at the sight of the girls in bikinis. Despite this, everyone was introduced to each other. As the teacher entered in her bikini, the excitement level of the boys with their mini sausages skyrocketed. The group then enjoyed their time in the pool. However, Takuru and Kengo's attention shifted when they noticed a moon bear around the hot spring, causing them to get scared. However, observing the girls' chill attitude, they realized it wasn't a significant concern. Meanwhile, the moon bear chased Takuru and Kengo, flipping them upside down. Fortunately, the girls used their magical powers to save them, and then collectively threw the moon bear far away without causing any harm. They explained that the club focused on handling situations and saving others without harm, using magical powers, and they referred their group as Makin Ki. Takuru was genuinely impressed by the club's concept. The next day began with intense training, requiring Takuru and Kengo to run 50 laps, leaving them exhausted and questioning their decision to join the club. During a lecture on Makin's different aspects, they struggled to concentrate. To wake them up, Inaho pointed out a cat on the president's cheap panties, sparking excitement in both of them. In Kadama's meditation class, they managed to concentrate until a teacher entered, distracting them with wild thoughts. At night, due to physical activities, Takuru's body was in pain. Inavo gave him a massage to ease the discomfort, impressing Takuru. Harunko couldn't resist intervening and provided Takuru with acupressure massage personally. Kadama, in continuous confusion, wondered if Takuru was still her enemy, as she hadn't felt the negative aura she initially felt from him. Kadama suddenly pressured Takuru with a strong massage. The next day being the weekend, Kadama invited Takuru for a hangout, leaving him amused. Takuru agreed to her. So the following day, as Takuru waited for Kadama in the courtyard, unknown to him, the other two girls and Kengo were spying from behind the bushes. When Kadama appeared, everyone was amazed by her beautiful attire, and she invited Takuru for shopping. However, later Takuru found himself being given the world's most important work, which was holding all the bags and boxes Kadama had purchased throughout their shopping. Meanwhile, the stalkers continued to watch Takuru and Kadama, and their surprise peaked when they saw the two enter a lingerie shop. Inside, Takuru tried to help Kodama choose a bikini, but due to the crowded space, he accidentally then fell into Kadama's changing room. Misunderstanding the situation, Kadama gave him again a tight kick in the face. After having a meal together, the pair spent some time sitting by a lake. Taking advantage of the moment, Kadama initiated her plan. She came close to Takuru and requested to see his chest, aiming to confirm the mark she was looking for. However, before she could inspect, an anonymous man entered and challenged Kadama to a fight. Without warning, he attacked her with his Makin Blade snake replica and managed to throw both Takuru and Kadama into the lake. As they fell into the water, they accidentally shared a kissing plot beneath the surface. Surprisingly, Takuru emerged from the lake with a powerful force, rescuing Kadama and defeating the anonymous man with a single blow. Kadama then realized that the mark on Takuru's chest was similar to that of his brother, signifying a convergence of his soul. However, Takuru remained unaware of what had occurred. Meanwhile, Kadama praised Takuru for saving her life and rewarding him with a kiss, leaving everyone around him amazed. The following day, Takuru learned that club members fought for more budget through negotiation. Yuruchi explained that as freshers, they couldn't participate in negotiation. Therefore, the security club president assigned Takuru and Yuruchi the duty of finding an individual who was causing trouble in the school. Later, exhausted and hungry, Takuru went to drink some water. While drinking water in the courtyard, a beautiful girl approached Takuru, claiming she could help him find the person behind the attacks. Curious, Takuru introduced himself, but before he could ask for further details, the girl trapped him in a web with her device, paralyzing him. Meanwhile, Yuruchi intervened and attacked the girl, revealing Takuru that she was the mastermind behind the attacks. However, when Ruchi disclosed her identity, that girl paralyzed her through her web. At that time, they discovered she could paralyze anyone by knowing their name. Yuruchi stopped Takuru from calling Makin key members, expressing the need to solve the problem themselves. However, the girl threw a spinner, propelling Yuruchi miles away. The sound reached till the Makin key members, prompting them to rush to the scene. Haruko then intervened and dueled with the girl, using her Makin. Haruko was able to defeat her in one stroke. After the victory, Yuruchi rushed to Haruko, apologizing for not being able to defeat the girl alone. Haruko reassured her and appreciated her effort. Takuru, impressed by Haruko's skills, ran towards her but accidentally fell and kissed her, earning Yuruchi's anger again. The next day, Ino recalled her childhood memories with Takuru when he suddenly appeared and woke her up on a class bench. Later in the day, during physical education, the instructor taught them how to focus their energy into a ball at the center point 
and Taikuru displayed considerable skill in doing so. The teacher then demonstrated the practical utility of this technique with the muscular Kuragasa, gathering energy around herself and delivering a powerful punch that sent Kuragasa flying, breaking through a wall. Taikuru was visibly impressed by the display of her strength. In the classroom, Inho missed her childhood memories with Taikuru, wondering why he still didn't remember anything. Meanwhile, Taikuru approached and informed her that Haruko had given them a grocery list, inviting her to accompany him. Inho happily agreed, and they spent the day shopping for groceries, enjoying the rainy weather, and walking with an umbrella on their way back to school. Later, as they sat on a bench, Inho tried to remind Taikuru of childhood memories connected to the rain but he couldn't recall them or even remember who Inaho was. Despite various hints and the mention of a promise, Takuru failed to remember. Finally, he asked Inaho to reveal herself, but she hoped he would recall her on his own. Feeling upset about the situation, when it was time to leave, Inaho requested to be left alone, stating she would join them later. After Takuru left, Inaho felt deeply upset that he couldn't recall her. When Takuru informed Haruko about leaving Inaho alone, he received a scolding from both Haruko and Kadama. They emphasize that Inaho is a sensitive girl with an ugly face, and as she loves Taikuru, it is his responsibility to take care of her. Understanding the seriousness of the situation, Taikuru hurried back to find Inaho. Along the way, he encountered Kengo, who informed him that he had seen Inaho heading towards the mountain in heavy rain and getting completely wet. On the other side, Inaho, feeling lonely and upset, tried to spend time with a cat she had found. As Taikuru reached the mountain, he saw a cat in the middle of the way. Suddenly, he noticed a large rock falling from the top. To save the cat, he ran and using the teachings from his physical education session earlier that day, managed to rescue it. However, more rocks began to fall, and he believed he wouldn't be saved this time. Just in time, Inao appeared and using her makin, destroyed all the rocks, saving both of them. But just after that, she got fainted. When Inho regained consciousness, she found herself on Taikuru's back. Taikuru then expressed his attempts to remember the promise but apologized for not being successful. Inho was happy that he had made an effort. They also brought the cat home, and the other girls were delighted to see the new addition. The next day, Haruko helped Takuru go to school, as he had been beaten by two fat girls for his usual mistake of accidentally touching her big melons. All of a sudden, Tagayashi rushed towards him, excitedly informing him that he had finally discovered the perfect match of Macon for Takuru. However, their conversation was interrupted by the arrival of a helicopter above the academy carrying a man named Akaya and its team of girls. Akaya, meeting with the principal of the academy, explained to her that he was there for a student exchange program from Kamigari, a group formed by people who opposed being ruled by the gods. They believed that abnormal activities in the Spirit Mountain indicated the presence of a god's beast in Tenbi Academy. The principal, aware that Dilip's son Takuru had joined, hid this fact and assured Akaya that there was no god's beast in their academy. Akaya then introduced their group of girls, named Venus, who were powerful individuals with formidable skills. An introduction session between Venus and Macon Key took place, leading to an argument between the students. To settle the dispute, a challenge was proposed of a dual volleyball match. The conditions were such that if Macon Key won, Venus would join them. But if Venus won, Macon Key would have to shut down until the end of the student exchange program. As the volleyball match began, Medea from Venus showcased her extraordinary power by using her element to slash the ball toward Haruko, surprising everyone. This fueled Haruko's anger, and then Macon Key gave a tough fight to them. Despite a tough fight, the match reached 14 is to 14 points. However, when it came to winning the last point, both teams resorted to playing dirty to secure victory. The intense volleyball match between Macon Key and Venus reached its climax when Medea, using her water-based energy, launched a powerful attack on the Macon Key team. Haruko, displaying great courage, utilized her own Macon and countered the water force, resulting in the creation of a massive energy ball. Sensing the potential danger, Takuru intervened to reduce the energy, but it led to a huge explosion, causing significant damage to the volleyball courtyard. As everyone regained consciousness, they realized that the explosion had also torn their clothes. Much to their surprise, they found Takuru lying on the melons of Syria, a girl from Venus who had a crush on him. Haruko and Medea then expressed gratitude to Takuru for saving them, acknowledging that if he had not intervened risking his life, the outburst and the energy could have destroyed the entire building. The memorable session concluded with a group photo featuring everyone in their slightly tattered attire. The following day, as the members of the Venus group attended classes at Tembi Academy, Sirius' entrance into the classroom unveiled her status as a renowned pop culture actress in the Western country. Syria also openly revealed her crush on Takuru, 
which bothered Inaho a lot. Observing the growing attention Takeru was receiving from all the girls, the ugly boys of the class became resentful and began threatening and physically assaulting him. However, the Venus group left a lasting impression on everyone with their exceptional performance in various activities. Later that evening, the Venus group convened for a meeting to discuss their mission, with Takeru as the target. Recognizing that three girls were emotionally attached to him and could pose obstacles, they decided to eliminate them, commencing their mission the next day. The subsequent day, when Takeru arrived in the classroom and sat beside Kengo, he noticed Kengo was upset for still being unsuccessful in finding a girlfriend, and was feeling disheartened. However, Takeru's day took an unexpected turn when he discovered a love letter in his bag, carefully hiding from others. Curious, he read the letter privately in the school washroom learning that a girl from his school had a deep crush on him and had planned to wait for him after class. Takeru was excited about meeting the mystery girl, but he remained unaware that Kengo in the adjacent overheard his thoughts and plans. Kengo being the gossiping neighbor informed Haruko and Kadama about Takeru's plans. Meanwhile, the president of the club arrived and informed the security team that some students were causing trouble around the school, leading Haruko and Kadama to be surprised. Later that day, as the class ended, Takeru hurried to meet his anonymous admirer at the school gate. To his surprise, he discovered that the love letter was from none other than Syria, who expressed her feelings for him. They went on a date, and Syria took Takeru to an unfamiliar place. Meanwhile, Haruko and Kadama reached a location with tables were piled up. They sensed something strange but were unsure of the situation. Kadama, with her intuition, realized that Medea was observing them from a hiding spot. Inaho then joined Haruko and Kadama and Medea openly declared her intention to attack and fight them. Impressively, Haruko had already discovered their plan using her superpower by obtaining their plan sheet. She learned that the Venus group aimed to distract the three girls and create a closer connection between Syria and Takuru, which could be potentially dangerous. With this information, Kadama instructed Haruko and Inaho to run and save Takuru while she dealt with Medea. However, upon reaching the location where Takuru was hiding, Haruko and Inaho discovered that there was no serious threat. Syria simply wanted to organize a concert in front of Takuru, and the entire Venus group was helping her to fulfill her wish. That night, the girls discussed the need to protect Takuru from the Venus group, recognizing the potential traps they might set for him. The following day, all the ugly boys signed a petition and presented it to the president of the student council. Thinking they were in America, they cried against separate swimming classes for girls and boys, 100% for the name of gender equality. However, the girls in the club suspected that the real motive behind the petition was to see them in revealing costumes, although Takuru and Kengo were genuinely concerned about the issue. The president pointed out that the girls had also submitted a petition for separate classes, and agreeing with the boys would be unfair. Kengo, through his useless brain, proposed a water-riding competition as a resolution, with the winning team having their petition accepted. On the day of the competition, as the girls were changing for the event, Takeru and Kengo were on the most important mission of their life, which was attempting to climb a ladder to sneak a peek into their changing room, which could straighten their Macon keys. Their Macon keys were stopped by Kuragasa, the muscular guy, who reminded them to focus on preparing for the competition. Kuragasa, how could you? Oh. Kengo then introduced them to Yusuya, a student having a Macon with a unique ability to make people's body disappear. <laughs> Yeah, boy. However, the excitement faded when they realized Yusoya's power was useless like him as his Macon could only make them invisible, not physically absent. Despite this, Kengo remained determined to see the hot chicks in swimsuits by winning the competition. Upon reaching the competition area at the swimming pool, the atmosphere was charged with hardcore excitement from the boys only. Cheers filled the air as everyone geared up for the competition. Five teams on each side were ready to fight in the water. Takeru initially planned to target Inaho, considering her an easy opponent due to her idiotic genes. However, to his surprise, Inaho was able to defend his attack. But when Takeru told her that he wanted her to taste his mini sausage, which was a dirty trick suggested by the biggest head of that school, Inaho got embarrassed, which allowed Takeru to defeat her. On the other side, Kadama with her invisible balls managed to defeat another team on the boy's side. Meanwhile, a boy got the opportunity to grab Haruko's oranges while defeating her. As the competition unfolded, teams from both sides gradually fell, leaving only Takuru and Kengo's team on the boy's side and the Venus team, led by Syria on the girl's side. Syria tried to seduce the boys by showing her football to him as if he could punch it. But not getting distracted, Takuru and Kengo rushed towards Syria to grab her as if she was their girlfriend's melon. 
They gave their best effort against Syria, but struggled to defeat her. Fortunately, Kengo managed to pull off her swimsuit, distracting the Venus team. Just then and as the Venus team were about to launch a wave attack on Taikuru, Maidea noticing the arrival of the new member of her team stopped the attack, causing Syria to fall onto Taikuru. Seizing the opportunity, Taikuru easily removed her band, securing victory for the boys' team. Meanwhile, when Syria inquired about why Maidea had stopped at the last moment, Maidea revealed that she wanted to introduce them to the new member of the Venus team. The next day, all the creepy boys were eager to join the girls for a swim and catch a glimpse of them in their attractive swimming costumes. To their surprise, the girls took the help of Yushuya to become invisible, <laughs> Gay! allowing them to swim invisibly in the pool, making the fool of the boys' victory. The next day, while Takuru and Kengo were enjoying their time in the courtyard, Takuru's attention was suddenly drawn to a girl with blue hair wearing a hat. Excited, Kengo checked his hot chick's diary containing the list of girls but found no record of such a student, suggesting she might be a new admission. Meanwhile, Haruko and Inaho, enjoying ice cream on the school terrace, were informed by the president of the student council that a new Venus member named Minerva has just arrived. To their surprise, Minerva was already present on the terrace, and they were amazed by seeing her extraordinary power. Meanwhile, as Taikuru and Kengo searched for the mysterious girl, as they had nothing else to do with their life, their attention was diverted to an argument between two students. During the heated argument between a girl named Odohan and a boy whom she accused of stalking her, tensions increased, leading to a power duel between them. Odohan had a special power using her Makin, which could paralyze and control opponents, turning them into a doll. In the course of the duel, she used this power to break the boy's hand. Concerned about the harm being caused, Takuru rushed to intervene. However, before he could reach Odohan, she also created a doll of him using her Makin, attempting to control him. Surprisingly, Takuru resisted the power of her Makin. Faced with no other option, Odohan had to eliminate Takuru. As she moved to crush the doll of Takuru, Minerva intervened and stopped her through her power. It was then revealed that Odohan's grandfather was the leader of the Kamigari, issuing a threat to Minerva, cautioning her that she would take her revenge. Grateful for Minerva's intervention, Takuru thanked her and Minerva introduced herself expressing the possibility of friendship. Later that day, a meeting was held between Takuru and the security club. Disappointed with Takuru's performance in the elemental exam, they decided to fire him from Macon Key. However, he was given a chance to stay if he passed a test of elements. When Takuru shared the news with the other ugly girls, they were saddened, particularly Inaho. Minerva joined the group of ugly people and suggested forming a study group to help Takuru pass the test. So they all gathered in Takuru's room, planning how to approach the practice. Kengo was advised to accompany Takuru for joint practice. Once the boys left, Minerva asked about their love, all the girls blushed, but Kagama opened up about her first love, capturing everyone's fascination. Meanwhile, Takuru struggled during practice. Unable to knock down a bottle using his powers, Kadama concerned decided to check on him, while Haruko and Inao prepared a special meal for the night. As Takuru concentrated all his energy on his fist, he finally succeeded in throwing the bottle, leaving a special mark on a tree. Meanwhile, even Kadama sensed the essence of his energy reaching her. In a surprising turn of events, the invisible superpower detected someone watching Kadama, revealing it to be Minerva, who astonishingly could see Kadama's superpowers. On the other hand, the Venus group questioned their headmaster about sending Minerva to keep an eye on Kadama. Akai had explained that Minerva was the most capable among all of them. The Venus group also expressed their fondness for the school. Meanwhile, it was disclosed that the god beast the Venus group was finding was none other than Kadama. In a confrontation, Minerva defeated the invisible superpower but clarified that she wasn't there to duel Kadama. She confessed that her duty was to test Tenbi Academy students in identifying. She found the same spirituality in Takuru. Minerva also then expressed her fondness for the school, having made good friends for the first time and experienced school life. The next day, Takuru was able to pass the test and he enjoyed to everyone. The day arrived when Takuru's Makin was installed in him. However, it was different from the usual as he didn't receive a visible weapon. Instead, energy was transformed, allowing him to use the Makin only if his opponent had one. Later, during a security committee meeting, they were informed about the upcoming summer training camp, an annual event. Kengo was excited to get one more chance to see Melons in the summer. But the catch this year was that every security club member had to cover their camp expenses. When the members questioned the budget, they were bluntly informed about perceived unnecessary expenses, leading to a reduction in the security club's budget. Confused about how to fund the camp, their attention turned to a pamphlet advertising a special event at a maid cafe, which needed additional staff. 
seeing this as a perfect opportunity to gather funds. The next day, Azuki went into the maid cafe as she was already working there. She was shocked to see her friend in that same cafe as a maid, as she was unaware of their decision to join. She was amazed to see that the maid cafe was filled with perverted boys for seeing hot chicks in aprons. When Azuki questioned her boss about the reason behind hiring the whole security club, as if her ugly face was not enough for the cafe, she was informed that the new member had really helped to increase the customer, which is beneficial for the cafe. Meanwhile, the muscular guy, Kurigasa, specifically visited the maid cafe to be served by Azuki. On the other hand, Kadama openly instructed her fan club members to order the most expensive items and leave a hefty tip for her. Takeru felt tense until he noticed that Inaho had organized a competition in the cafe, where whoever finishes a whole cake before her gets a free drink for a year. Meanwhile, Takeru was even more amazed when he saw the principal with Tagayashi in the maid cafe. It turned out that the owner of the maid cafe, Catherine, was their old friend from their time as students at the Tenbi Academy. This revelation impressed Takeru. On the other hand, Otoheim was plotting a hazardous plan for Tenbi Academy, involving the testing of a drug. Meanwhile, the members of the security club were managing the maid cafe fantastically. However, the owner of the maid cafe suddenly had to leave, leaving Takeru in charge of the cafe. All of a sudden, Azuki intervened in a playful manner, teasing Takeru about obtaining milk from Haruko's melon, which left Haruko feeling embarrassed. Takeru, coming back from experiencing heaven, quickly refocused his attention and chased after Haruko to offer support. As Haruko was standing in her balcony feeling upset about the incident, suddenly, a heavily armored man appeared and began firing bullets indiscriminately at Haruko. Haruko, despite her attempts, couldn't defend herself with her Macon. The armored man persistently attacked, posing a serious threat. Just as he was about to deliver a decisive blow to Haruko, Takeru intervened, attempting to halt the assault. Despite being unable to use his Macon against a non-Macon opponent, Takeru struggled to withstand the armored man's relentless attacks. Just as the armored man was about to finish them off, Azuki intervened and defeated the armored man in one stroke. As they were about to reveal his face, the principal also joined them. When they finally opened the armor, they discovered that the person behind the attack was none other than the owner of the maid cafe, Catherine. Later, they learned that Catherine was being controlled by drugs, and this wasn't the first time it happened. The principal revealed that a similar event occurred during the first generation of Macon Key, with members being controlled by Odoheim. Shockingly, a powerful girl named Kikyu had also joined Odoheim on her dreadful mission. The next day, as Haruko walked on the streets, she fondly recalled the childhood memory of Takeru bravely jumping into a lake to save a boy. This memory inspired her to aspire to be as strong as Takeru, appreciating his selfless nature. However, in a sudden and shocking turn of events, Haruko was kidnapped. Meanwhile, Takeru and Kadama were discussing her absence when they realized she was missing. Meanwhile, it was then revealed that Haruko had been kidnapped by Odohan. Simultaneously, the principal and Tagayashi were discussing their first-generation Mekin Key, revealing that Takeru's father was a founding member of their team. While descending the staircase, Takeru received a message from a girl that Haruko was in Odohan's custody and that he had to go to the top of Spirit Mountain to meet her. Before he could respond, the girl fainted, indicating she had been influenced by drugs to deliver the message. Concerned for Haruko, Takuru rushed to the top of Spirit Mountain, where he encountered Kikyu waiting for a duel. An eagle brought a message from Odoheim, revealing that this was revenge for past actions. Odoheim threatened harm to Haruko if Takuru didn't comply their orders. Therefore, Takuru and Kikyu engaged in a duel. Kikyu, using her elemental powers, created a hole in Takuru's shirt and imposed severe blows, leading him to bleed severely. Takuru then recalled his mother's teachings about using one's strength for protecting others. Fueled by this memory, he concentrated all his energy and absorbed a vast amount of elemental energy from the sacred mountain. This unexpected surge of power transformed Takuru into a force to be reckoned with. The brilliant light and intense energy radiated throughout the school capturing the attention of onlookers, including Kadama, who sent her new superpower to investigate. Observing this scenario, Odomai was pleased, anticipating that after absorbing so much energy, Takeru might go crazy and create chaos. As expected, Takeru, now acting like a monstrous force, began to unconsciously run toward the school. Upon witnessing Takeru approaching the school, all the girls gathered on the ground, preparing to defend the school against his uncontrollable state. Despite their efforts to convince him to regain consciousness, Takeru remained unconscious. Odoheim, finding the situation exciting, eagerly awaited Takeru's potential destruction of the school. However, Haruko intervened, 
expressing her belief that Takuru wouldn't harm anyone intentionally. She shared Takuru's childhood trauma, explaining that he couldn't protect his mother from a dojo challenger, leaving a deep scar. Haruko was convinced that Takuru wouldn't harm others, even if it meant risking his own life. All of a sudden, Team Venus appeared, blocking Odoheim's attempts to harm Haruko and even providing a way for her to reach her high school directly. Touched by their support, Haruko felt emotional. After that, Akai intervened, conveying a direct order from Odoheim's grandpa for her to stop the chaos. Although Odoheim complied, a seed of revenge sprouted within her. Meantime in school, Takeru continued absorbing elements, growing more powerful and hazardous. The girls were understandably frightened as he became increasingly uncontrollable. Suddenly a light filled the sky, and Haruko with her Makin appeared. Kadama discovered Haruko's plan to crash her blood pointer Makin with Takeru's, reducing his absorbed energy. The risky move led to a powerful explosion, forming a cyclone and a blast. But fortunately, when things settled, the girls rushed toward Takeru and Haruko, finding Haruko's melon on Takeru's face. But their concern for Takeru's safety overshadowed the awkwardness. Suddenly, Kikyu with her useless guards appeared from nowhere, offering Takeru admission to Kamigari, impressed by his power. However, this only fueled Takeru's anger. Then the president of the security club revealed they got to know about their plan to conquer the Tenbi Academy through Akaya. The security club asserted their commitment to protecting Tenbi Academy's peace and order with Macon Key, insisting the invaders return home. Days later, peace was restored at Tenbi Academy. Tekuru then focused on improving himself through regular practice, and now Kadama was accompanied by Kengo for shopping. Harunko became the president of the security club, and together they formed a perfect Macon Kai. Do you think Odohim will come back to take revenge? If you've gotten this far, comment RIP Takuru to confuse the fake fans. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Good, just like that. Now, put it in. No, deeper than that. Yeah, that's it. Right. No Wait, way. you're going too fast. Not just yet. Okay, you can take your fist out now.